I feel like the Sean Chan, especially off of the Robert Jordan books, are really a colorful group. Um, I feel like when the High Lady Surath comes on scene, she is like a rock star and she's in charge and she doesn't have to say much. So I feel like there was that perfect marriage between costume, hair and makeup, um, set design, props, to really kind of lean into what she stands for. She has that very long nail that she clicks and flicks around. She barely says anything. She has her voice. You have forgotten your history. Played by Jessica Boone, um, Halloween, and she just like, you know, they have their positions and their mask, and I think there's something kind of um, extremely graphic about their world and very violent. It's a violent and dark world, but they believe in it because that's the way they live. So they've come to kind of conquer. Today is that day. And are kind of colonizing. Um, and I find that very, very, very scary. <laughs> Who are they? What do they want? For the Shan Shan, I, um, in fact, all of the cultures in the Wheel of Time, um, I, def I start with the reference material. I start with the source material. So Robert Jordan was an expert in writing great detail about the way that people dress. So that was, uh, that's a real gift to a costume designer to have that much information. Um, one of the things I picked up on was the insect idea, the weirdness, making them feel very scary, intimidating, and really strange and other. Who will be the first to swear the oaths? With the Shan Shan, the first thing I had to do was create the soldier costume, the army, um, which is quite a big number. We had this idea of twisting the meta, a twisting leather, which is the, the way that their armor looks, and then putting gold foiling on it so it looks sharp, like you could touch any part of their armor and you'd be injured immediately. And then that idea developed into some of the pleating and so on, and the twisting on uh, Suros costume, on Turek's costume, on some of the crowd costumes as well. And that became part of the language. Um, the pleating became part of the language. I think that's also in the books. I also added the reptilian idea into the, some of the costumes, some of the fabrics, the print on here is all done by us um, as a sort of reptilian but beautiful and terrifying kind of look. I have never read or heard anything of these people. It was a daunting process to start off with. It was one of my first design processes I had to do for the, sh the whole show when I first arrived. Um, and so I, you know, I had a look at the season one. I wasn't part of season one, but I saw what they had done at the very end of season one, we're on the ship. And so I saw, you know, a little insight into the Shan Chan. And so for me, I wanted to change some aspects of it and uh, look at the different colorings of the Soldam and the Damane. And so, and getting also the hair right. The hair was a big part of um, the detailed work. Um, you know, Sharon had put so much work into the costumes that I needed to also step it up and raise the bar on, you know, making it coerce and work together. And so, um, and there's different elements to the Shan Chan. You've got Lord Tarek, which is at the top of the chain. You've got Lady Sauroth. Then you've got Arwen, and who are the voices of the both of them. Then coming down the chain, you've got the Death Watch, you've got the Soldam, you've got the Demane, you've got the Bloods. So there's so many different elements to the Shan Chan that we had to design over the course of the season. And a lot of it was shot near the end, but we also had a fair amount of like Lady Sorroth that was shot that you guys haven't seen yet. And so I'm excited for you guys to see what it looks like underneath those masks. Are they ready? So it was like a really, uh, the pyramid for Lady Short was really something which we discussed in uh, various meetings and there was really, you know, we discussed even like a different version of how she's arriving, like a, she's arriving on a boat, there was one of the options, she's arriving like on, that, on that palanquin and it's really like a, that palanquin is really uh, one of the good example of the collaboration of the more, more people in a set because it has to be like a, a hold by the slaves but also, of course, it has to be brought by the 
special effects to, to make it physically brought into the, into the set, but after that we don't want to see its uh, special effects and we want to make it like a, as um, kind of natural as possible, so we need a little bit of um, help of visual effects to clean stuff, like a wires and rigs, to look like it's okay, the, the, the slaves are really holding it. Bow before the High Lady Sura. The arrival of the Shan Chan had to be very meaningful. It's a huge part of Series 2, um, and it is a colonial occupation, and, and, uh, and that story is, a, is a really powerful, I think, because it is a, a metaphor for uh, other colonial kind of messages that we've, we, we know through history. And I think that's the wonderful thing about Robin Jordan. He's not afraid in these books to take on the big questions, the big um, aspects of society are taken on. Take them on!